Hey guys, it's Mike here, and in this video, I'm going to be discussing another what if versus battle that would have taken place in the Boo saga of Dragon Ball Z. That particular fight would have pitted Super Saiyan 3 Go Tanks versus Kid Boo, and the question of who would have actually come out victorious if those two battled it out for the fate of the universe at the end of that arc. Well, in this video, I'm going to be breaking that down in depth, going into the manga, and discussing not only who is more powerful, but who is more likely to prove victorious. But before I begin, if you're new to this channel, consider subscribing, enabling all notifications so you can stay up to date with my future videos. Additionally, if you like this video, make sure to leave a like, share your own thoughts down below in the comments, and share the video out so even more people can see these videos so I can continue to make even more of them going forward. But with that being said, let's get into the video. Okay, so as I usually do in these particular videos, I'm going to be going into the strength of each of these individual fighters, as well as their different capabilities, and then applying it to this hypothetical versus battle to see exactly who would actually come out victorious. Beginning, of course, with Gotenks, the fusion of the son of Goku and the son of Vegeta into this powerful dance Metamorese fusion. But just how powerful is Gotenks? Well, I broke that down in depth in its own dedicated video that you could see in the top right, but for the purposes of this video, I'm going to be breaking that down one more time. And interestingly enough, the way that I'm going to be able to do that is by starting with another fight that took place before we see this initial fusion of the two, which was was between Super Saiyan 3 Goku and Fat Boo. So with that being said, for anyone who remembers, with uh, everything going on, Boo was going to West City to destroy Capsule Corp and everything else there. Goku had to stall Fat Boo in this case and allowed Trunks to go get the Dragon Radar so that he would be able to resurrect everyone who was killed by Boo after this. I actually broke down who would win a fight between the, these two different fighters in a video in the top right that you could see up there. So, with that being said, as we saw when Goku went into his final form at the time, of course he would have many more final forms after this, the two began their battle, and Goku went and started to dominate Fat Boo, punching him, grabbing him by his antenna, or whatever you want to call it, tentacle, feeler, so on and so forth, and punching him around like a toy, slamming him to the ground, and then Boo ended up using Vegeta's technique. But, after we saw this, no matter what Goku was doing, as he pointed out right here, he didn't hurt him at all, and Boo was capable of learning quickly. However, Boo wasn't really able to deal any significant damage to Goku, as we saw when he punched him, and Goku just smiled it off. However, this entire time Goku's timer on Earth was wearing down because of just how much power he had to borrow against his living body and his time there with that spiritual body and everything, as I broke down that video I mentioned before. So essentially, as we saw this fight continue on, Goku blasted through Boo, he continued to instantly regenerate through everything to the shock of Goku, and then he even fired Goku's attack right back at him, which Goku deflected, and it proceeded to destroy one-tenth of the planet as a result, even though this theoretically would be able to destroy vastly more if he intended for it to do so, which I also discussed in another video that you could see in the top right, discussing exactly uh, how planet planet busting and even solar system busting works in this franchise. But as we saw, Goku was praising Boo for his power. He found out that Trunks had attained the Dragon Radar, and then he powered back down, and he told Boo after he was getting really anxious that the ones that he and Bobbity were looking for would come in two days, and Boo asked, are they strong? At this point, Bobbity saying, why should they wait? And then Goku teleported back to Kami's palace. This is where we get the statements regarding uh, Gotenks' power relative to Goku and Boo, which we go on to see right here. Which is after Boo had killed Bobbity, and they're observing him still destroying things down on the planet after they had been hopeful that maybe he would stop with the negative influence of Bobbity no longer in there. And Goku goes on to say, I told him somebody stronger than me will fight him in two days. He seemed happy. I think we'll be safe for two days at least. I feel bad for the people down below though. So the youngsters must perfect fusion by then, asked Piccolo, and then Goku says, yeah, we better get cracking. I've probably got less than an hour left. 
So the thing is, in terms of all of this, we do see this exchange that Goku is referencing right here, where he says that the ones that he's looking for will show up in two days. And then uh, Boo says, are they strong? So in this version of the manga, Goku does not actually say to Boo that stronger fighters will show up. However, I would say that this is more of an example of Toriyama just forgetting to include this particular piece of dialogue, or perhaps you could say retconning it in very shortly after we're in the very next chapter that Goku did in fact say this. So if you really want to, you could say that Goku told Boo this off screen right before Bobby yells at him right here. And even then you could even imply it based upon what Goku is saying right here, that the ones you're looking for will come in three, no two days and just stop and wait until then to which Boo responds, are they strong? So again, I think everything kind of ties into that kind of idea that Goku right here is saying that Goten Trunks as Gotenks will be even stronger than he is. And remember, Goku knows firsthand just how strong Fusion is. First off, he explains right here that he met a couple of memories in the afterlife who taught him how to use the Fusion Dance. You can only do it with somebody around the same size and power, but when they do it, they become way stronger than the sum of their parts. And unfortunately, he was not able to actually test it out himself because nobody in the afterlife was on his level at the time or likely around the same, you know, physical size and matter as well. Additionally, Goku knows specifically just how powerful Goten Trunks are at the time because he saw them both as Super Saiyans when he was teaching them initially how to do the fusion dance and also how to balance their chi with one another. So as a result, they would be able to be perfectly even and flow into one another. So as a result, Goku knows firsthand just how powerful Goten Trunks will become when they fuse together into Gotenks as a Super Saiyan at their maximum powers, and as a result, he knows that he is extrapolating that this power right here of Gotenks would actually be even more powerful than Goku as he was when he was a Super Saiyan 3 and fought Fat Boo. A lot of people try and discount this and try and say that Goku was lying or that he was full of it, but he literally has zero reason in this example to lie and he was planning this entire thing out and training Goten Trunks so that they would be able to defeat Fat Boo and so as a result Goku being the foremost expert on uh, Metamarie's fusion here out of everyone here would know firsthand not only how powerful he is as a Super Saiyan 3 but also how strong Goten Trunks would be as Super Saiyans uh, when they became Gotenks and even when they power up everyone is shocked by just how incredibly powerful he is is, including Piccolo, who had sent Super Saiyan 3 Goku and still says, your chi is impressive. But this isn't even the maximum power that we see from Gotenks right here, because he goes on to go into the hyperbolic time chamber and train to become even more powerful, as we go on to see right here, right before the battle against uh, Super Boo. At which point, Piccolo says, he does seem different, they've powered up hugely, this may succeed. Now let's talk a little bit about that fighter that Gotenks is going to go up against here, which is Super Boo, before this event happens. And this will also really help with scaling the power not only of Gotenks, but also Kid Boo during the hypothetical fight when I get into that. So when it comes to the power of Super Boo, he is vastly more powerful than Fat Boo was. Because of a number of different things, I also talked about in a video in the top right where I discussed exactly how strong Super Boo was. And the fact of the matter is, according to Piccolo, not only is he stronger, but as he explains right here, he's transformed and now his body is perfectly suited to battle. His soul is pure rage. I fear that this is the end, essentially, is what he's saying. So not only did the power of Boo increase to where he was no longer held back by the positive influence of the Grand Supreme Kai or Dai Kaio Shin, but additionally, he also transformed his body from the fat body Body into a taller, uh, leaner, and stronger, more uh, versatile body and form that would allow him to handle that body of not only the power of all of the boos within him, being the kid boo and the fat boo, but also the supreme kais within him simultaneously for the ultimate power overall. 
And we got to see this on display when he actually went to fight against Gotenks. Additionally, this Boo was actually even more powerful than Goku, as he goes on to explain later on. Because after Goku and Vegeta had fused into Vegito and went inside of Super Boo Han's body, what they did was they began to remove all of these different components that were absorbed within Boo as we see him regressing through these different forms up until the point where he went back to being the base Super Boo that we see right here. At that point, they are going to blast their way out, and Goku says right here, wait, he's still stronger than either of us, he'll kill us if we go out like this. And Goku says to Vegeta that they would have needed the Batara fusion just to be able to beat this form of Super Boo. Now, a lot of people seem to believe that Goku was also bluffing in this particular situation because in the manga and the anime, when Boo, after he'd absorbed the power of Super Saiyan 3 Gotenks, went to try and fight him, Goku is begging him off, and then he actually transforms into a Super Saiyan 3. But in both the anime and manga, Goku is far outclassed by Super Boo tanks. As you could see right here, he's saying no, he's like scared, and he's sweating because he knows he's stands no chance against this power of Boo, which has been basically doubled by the increase of adding uh, Gotenks and also, you know, the very small increase from Piccolo into his body. And in the anime version, Goku is getting schooled by Gotenks. He's not holding his own like many people misremember. He stands zero chance. Boo is just playing around with him. However, at this point, what we end up seeing happening is that uh, Goku sees that Boo Tanks has actually reverted back into Buikolo at this point because of the fact that Goten Trunks had defused within him and Piccolo was now the most powerful and preeminent form that was within Boo's body at this point. Goku says at this point, haha, feeling weaker? The kid's fusion just wore off. I bet Piccolo's in there slowing you down. He then says at this point, too bad, it's kind of disappointing. Gohan can handle you now. So the original English dub, they changed it to say either one of us can handle you now. Like I said in a previous video, my video about Goku versus Piccolo and who would have won the Star Dragon Ball Z, the dub should never be included in these particular assessments because there are so many changes that are not in line with the manga or the original Japanese, which is usually one-to-one -one with the dialogue. So as a result, you could disregard that. Goku is just saying that Gohan would be able to win because the disparity between Boo with the absorption of Piccolo, Goten, Trunks is still vastly below Gohan, despite the fact that Gotenks with Piccolo in Boo's body was capable of beating him because of just how big of a boost the uh, fusion multiplier is inside there. So with that being said, we've set up that Super Boo in his base form is stronger than Super Saiyan 3 Goku. Additionally, we've set up that Gotenks, when he initially first fused together into Gotenks as a Super Saiyan, is also stronger than Super Saiyan 3 Goku, according to Goku's own words and all the narrative that's in there that is never once contradicted. And additionally, Gotenks, when he goes into the hyperbolic time chamber, powers up hugely, according to Piccolo, where he is now several times stronger than Super Saiyan 3 Goku at this point. The two of them go on to fight, and initially, of course, as his base form, he doesn't stand a chance against Boo until he becomes a Super Saiyan, that he could put up a little bit more of a fight, using more of his techniques here like the galactic donut and also you know using even more abilities that we see later on of course at this point super boo isn't going all out he doesn't do that until later in the fight after uh, gotenks uses his super saiyan 3 which i'll get into shortly however another ability that could prove incredibly useful not only in this uh, fight but all hypothetical fights that involve gotenks is this ability he's using right here of the super ghost kamikaze attack or the super kamikaze Kamikaze Ghost Strike in the manga, where he creates these sentient ghosts that, upon contact, blow up and can deal significant damage to somebody even as powerful as Super Boo. And as the fight goes on and he tricks Super Boo, he's actually able to blow him up with a bunch of them simultaneously and then even send a, a ghost right down Boo's throat and blow him up from the inside. And then he proceeds to, at this point, 
start to vaporize all the different pieces and components of his body that are left over, turning him into ashes and dust, which is incredibly helpful when it comes to determining how well he'd be able to do against any of the forms of Boo, other than the ones that are stronger than, of course, you know, this one right here. With that being said, however, as we could see, this is something that could possibly play into even Kid Boo's side, because Super Boo goes on to regenerate from smoke. Yes, smoke. He's in ashes. He is demolecularized on the ground, if you want to use a word I just invented out of nowhere. He is uh, completely broken down uh, to the atomic level, and yet he still comes back from smoke and is able to continue fighting with zero loss of stamina from what we could see at all. However, Gotenk still has a trick up his sleeve where he's able to become a Super Saiyan 3 right here, screaming his way out just like Super Boo did earlier, and being able to go on to fight against Super Boo. However, one of the things I haven't really mentioned that much so far is the fact that Gotenks is doing something even now after he sees what happened that he was doing even earlier in the fight, which is that he has a tendency to play around with his opponents. He doesn't always fight serious from the start like he really should if he wants to end everything then and there. So at this point, he's still playing around with Super Boo even though he's a Super Saiyan 3. And another thing, too, that he'll go on to mention uh, shortly after this volleyball attack that he used, which is kind of a send up to uh, TN that we see in the 22nd tournament. He explains right here that his fusion timer is actually running a little bit short and that if he runs out, it will be an hour before he'll be able to fuse again. This is actually where Boo, you could see right here with his shocked expression, comes up with a whole plan of absorbing Gotenks after he uh, fakes the explosion when he goes to fight against Ultimate Gohan and then of course comes back and causes Gotenks to fuse again so that he can absorb them at their most powerful. And another thing worth noting is a weakness of the Super Saiyan 3 form and how it impacts the fusion timer of Gotenks. As we see right here, as Piccolo is leading Super Boo to the hyperbolic time chamber, Goten Trunks were fusing, and they say that, oh, they never knew that there was a level beyond Super Saiyan, which is another contradiction that Toriyama has many of them in this arc because they saw Goku do this, and they talk about how the fusion uses up all of their energy, even exhausting them when they are uh, just in their normal form. Forms, and they say the weakness is time and they can only do it for five minutes and that it even canceled out their fusion because of just how powerful it is. Of course, they want to excite everything and make everything even more cool. So as a result, they want to start out with just their regular fusion and go from there, which we saw in the fight. But nonetheless, this is a major weakness that they would have, whether it be to fight against uh, Super Boo, Kid Boo, or anyone else, because if they can only maintain this incredible power power of Super Saiyan 3 for five minutes, that that ends up being a massive problem because if the fight lasts for longer than that, with Gotenks going full power from the start, let's say, then that's going to be a massive contributing factor to them possibly not being able to pull off that victory. But as we do see, eventually Gotenks is able to get the advantage over Boo when he gets really annoyed after Boo blasts him with this and starts to take everything seriously, speed blitzing him, knocking him back, and then having this particular situation situation set up to where Boo is scared. He's not instantly regenerating like he normally does. And it looks like there's a chance for him to actually be able to obliterate Super Boo right here and now, saying that he'll not only destroy him, but even obliterate the ashes with his chi to the point to where he'll never even be able to regenerate again. Unfortunately, because he wasted so much time and so much energy, he reverts back to his base form and then even defuses because the fact of the matter is that the Super Saiyan and three expended that five minute timer, lowering his normal 30 minutes down to five, and then in turn causing him to revert back to his base form. And then to go 10 trunks, which means that he was not able to secure that victory. Now, since I've talked at length about the power of Super Saiyan 3 Gotenks and also his different fighting styles and his weaknesses, along with the strengths, I do also want to talk about the boo that emerges from within Super Boo after they remove Fat Boo which of course is Kid Boo, as we go on to see right here. Now, first off, in terms of the power of Kid Boo, there is a statement as we see that Boo is regressing back through his 
different forms, where Goku says, wait a second, Vegeta, isn't his chi getting bigger? This is what leads to him turning into what we call Buff Boo in the fandom, which is Boo with the Supreme Kai of the South absorbed within him, who is the most powerful Supreme Kai, assuming that we're not also including the Dai Kaioshin in that particular example. We don't really know for sure if he was included, but I have the feeling that the Dai Kaioshin was probably more powerful than even Kid Boo with the absorption of Southern Supreme Kai. Otherwise, why would he have absorbed him? This is the point where we get the explanation of who Kid Boo was, the original true pure Boo, when he first goes back into this original state. Now, before that, we do actually see Goku and Vegeta laughing and mocking him in terms of look how weak he is. You know, we could definitely take him now. A lot of people assume that for whatever reason, Vegeta is just talking about how small he is and that they'd be able to defeat him dis despite how, you know, powerful he actually is in reality. But I think that this is kind of a nonsensical point to make, considering the fact that they have time and time again fought incredibly small, powerful uh, characters. Vegeta himself was a small, strong character. Goku himself was a small, strong character. Frieza was. You know, we saw this time after time after time. So I really don't think that these characters at this point in the story are misjudging Boo in terms of his strength overall, just because of the fact that he's smaller. And it has more to do with the fact that his power actually has gone down. So I don't think that this was kind of a gotcha moment or something like that where Toriyama was subverting expectations and Kid Boo really is the most powerful based upon this scene and based upon the, oh, his chi's increasing line, but more that the chi increased before it went back down because he was regressing through the forms. And naturally this form right here that we could see had a higher normal power level than the Super Boo, which possibly still had some kind of, uh, I guess you could say, quote unquote, corrupting force within him from the Dai Kaioshin and the influence of Fat Boo, other than the bare minimum when he goes to attack Mr. Satan later on and then spits him out. This is where we get the statement about how he had absorbed the different Kais, with those being the Dai Kaioshin and the Southern Supreme Kai. And then we see right here that the Elder Supreme Kai says that the souls tamed him, and this is the first most difficult one. And then he explains that this is Boo who is evil incarnate. He's never saying that this is the most powerful Boo. Otherwise, again, why would he have absorbed not only these different characters, but also when Boo, who remember is Kid Boo with the power of Fat Boo absorbed within him, as well as Gohan, Piccolo, and everyone else like that, does absorb Gohan into himself. He states right here, now I'm stronger than ever before and with no time limit. So even before this, he also said that Gotenks Boo, Super Boo Tanks, was the most powerful Boo at the time. So again, time after time after time, they are not telling us that Kid Boo is the strongest Boo in the manga. And even during the fight, let's get into right now, between Goku and Kid Boo, as we could see right here, that is never actually stated in the manga version. I'll get into the anime momentarily. Now, with that being said, Goku does believe that he stands a chance of defeating Kid Buu right here, even though, of course, he hasn't seen him go 100% quite just yet, and maybe you can argue he never does throughout the course of the fight. This is where Goku makes a statement about that he could have defeated Buu, the fat one, with Super Saiyan 3, but as I talked about in that video, you could see in the top right corner, uh, I do not necessarily certainly think that would have been the case because Goku didn't really know the full capabilities of Boo's regeneration because he didn't actually observe the fight in the hyperbolic time chamber between Super Boo and Gotenks where he regenerated from smoke or of course he doesn't even know until he starts to fight Kid Boo right here just how much he can output. This is where we see the fight going on right here, and the two of them aren't really that far apart in terms of their power. Goku, time after time, is taking down Boo in which he's blasting him away, knocking him back. And, you know, a lot of people have been under the impression that Kid Boo is vastly more powerful than Goku here, especially because of the fact that in the Dragon Ball Super manga, they end up saying that Kid Boo actually has God Key, and he inherited the God Key from the Fat Supreme Kai, and he had it the entire time, and he was so much more powerful. Now, Oop has God Key, so he could be super relevant and not completely outdated and purpose and completely pointless because of the fact that, you know, every other character is trillions of times more powerful than him and Kid Boo making the power and the potential completely irrelevant. I don't really justify that because I think it's ridiculous and absurd and Toriyama didn't even have that idea in mind here at the time, not to mention that that completely contradicts how God Key even works in Dragon Ball Super. So I think it's just another ridiculous thing that I just completely write off and don't include in the original continuity decades before that.
that. Kind of like the idea that somehow the Cell Juniors just regenerate off screen and were training alongside Android 17, even though just one of them would have been able to effortlessly one shot him, unless people think that for some reason everyone at the Cell Games who is fighting against the Cell Juniors were weaker than 17, even though all of them should have been able to one shot him at that point. But the fact of the matter is that even though Goku is able to put up a really good fight against Kid Buu, he spends so much of the fight, you know, fighting him in terms of punching and kicking and even biting him eventually, as we see right here, and not trying to necessarily just dump all of his energy into one blast simultaneously to try and obliterate him. Now, also, a lot of people do like to try and say that because Vegeta says that Goku is number one or that he is the champion, this version for some reason, that he is actually the most powerful. Again, that's not what he's saying. This is all about Goku's like mentality and kind of like his relationship and dynamic with Vegeta and what Vegeta has observed. Not that Goku is the most powerful overall. And again, everything really comes down to even though Goku blasts Kid Buu, he keeps regenerating time after time after time. Goku isn't able to defeat him because he is uh, not only powerful, but also simultaneously he is regenerating from everything that Goku is putting out and seems to basically have unlimited stamina at this point in time up until when he goes to fight against Fat Buu, which I'll show in a moment. At this point, Goku says that he needs to rev up to its 100% full power, which very well might be what we actually saw him displaying against Fat Buu earlier in the arc, but he wasn't able to do so. And then during this fight, he isn't able to do so at all because the fact that Super Saiyan 3 with his living body doesn't really allow him to do that anymore because the fact that it drains just way too much of his stamina in that trade-off. Now also comparing the power of Kid Buu to the other Buu's, another example we get is right here when we see him fight against Fat Buu. Now the two of them are battling one another and even though Kid Buu definitely does have the advantage over Fat Buu, it doesn't really seem like it's that significant. And remember, Fat Buu here isn't necessarily as powerful as he was when Goku fought him earlier in the arc. And that's because the fact that when he was at his most powerful as Fat Buu, Buu had a contradiction within himself between the good and the bad, kind of like Kami, and as a result, he separated himself into the good half, Good Buu, Mr. Buu, and the evil half, the Gray Buu, the evil Buu that we see right here, which eventually led to this evil Buu taking over Fat Buu and incorporating himself into him so that he could become Super Buu because of the fact that this Buu had the majority of the power that was in that trade-off. So as a result, the Buu that we're actually seeing that's fighting against Kid Buu right here uh, is most likely this good Buu that's right here. And as a result, is a very strong chance that he is not as powerful as he was when Goku fought him earlier on as a Super Saiyan 3 at this point in time, because this is all of Buu with Kid Buu and uh, the Dai Kaioshin and Southern Supreme Kai within him, as opposed to this Buu, which is not Kid Buu, but still has the Dai Kaioshin and probably Southern Supreme Kai within him as a result. And thus, that would mean necessarily that he is weaker than he would have been when Goku fought him initially earlier in the arc. And even despite that, he's not doing that terrible where he keeps regenerating against this Buu and keeps fighting back against him too. Where he's able to take a shot after shot from Kid Buu in all of his different attacks, but as Vegeta points out right here, there is a weakness inherent within Boo when he fights against himself, which is, have you noticed Kakarot? The fat one's power is going down. They can get hurt when they're fighting another Boo. So this is implying that the only time that we ever see Boo having difficulty really regenerating at this point in time and really actually having stamina decreases and it's when he's fighting against himself, maybe because of some magical force field or property inherent within the different Boos that cause them to weaken one another. But nonetheless, this isn't something that Gotenks would really have on his side when it comes to the fight. Now, another thing worth noting is a lot of people have mentioned over time that they think that Kid Buu is vastly more powerful than Gotenks, Gohan, and Goku combined because of the fact that later on when we see Goku goes to use the Spirit Bomb, Goten, Trunks, Ultimate Gohan, and Piccolo all donate their energy to the Genki Dama, which then in turn Goku still doesn't think is anywhere near powerful enough to be able to defeat Kid Buu. However, the problem is that this is not the exact same type of energy that the other types of energy are when somebody's fighting against you. This is Genki 
Genki, which is only one aspect of energy. And not just that, but when the human beings donate all of their energy, even though all of them combined should theoretically be a lot weaker than even one of these fighters that we just saw donating their energy, only then does the energy sphere get this much more gigantic, and then Goku believes he'd be able to kill Kid Buu. Of course, Buu is able to stop this attack momentarily and hold it off, but that's not because of the fact that Kid Buu is vastly more powerful than everyone in it combined. It's because of the fact that, as they show right here, Goku doesn't have the power left to unleash it because the fact of the matter is that he ran out of stamina at this point. Also, this seems like another plot contrivance Toriyama came up with to stretch out the ending even more than it already had been, which was ridiculously at this point. But the fact of the matter is, when Goku just becomes a regular Super Saiyan, after he gets his energy restored, as we could see right here, he's still able to just detonate the explosion and annihilate Kid Buu right here and now. Additionally, a lot of people do seem to believe that Kid Buu would only be able to be obliterated and defeated by this Genki attack because it was targeting his evil chi. Again, there's nothing that's really stated specifically in the anime or the manga that ever says this. So I think that's more fan fiction headcanon. I also discussed that in another video you can see in the top right corner, breaking that down specifically. And of course, no assessment of Kid Buu's power would be complete without the obligatory statement that I always have to mention of the anime, where they say one time when Goku is fighting him that he's on a whole different level from all the Boos up until now. This is the only statement that we ever actually get in the anime or in any version of the story that makes it seem like Kid Buu may be more powerful. I've seen other people try and interpret this to say that actually he meant like on a whole different level in terms of, I don't know, like uh, aggression or being different in terms of his fighting style and stuff like that. But the truth of the matter is Goku never really did fight head on with the other super boos as well. So you could throw that into the mental gymnastics. I think this is just an excuse for Toei to try and make this seem like the most powerful villain and Goku like the most powerful fighter because they always have to make the last guy seem like the strongest. But again, every single other statement in the manga still exists in the anime that goes against this. And the idea that Goku and, and Vegeta fighting against the uh, the images of Gohan and Gotenks inside of Super Buu's mind. I know that there's a guidebook that says out there that, you know, they are uh, equal to Ultimate Gohan and Gotenks. But again, guidebooks are something that Toriyama did not create himself. There is something that he might have approved of that they say is official and canon, just like the dub they say is official, and that has so many changes within it too. But really, every other statement and every other feat of power over all, other than this, and then if you want to argue that fight inside of Boo's head that's completely filler just like this scene, goes to show that Kid Boo is simply not as powerful as Super Boo or the absorptions, which he himself states when he was Super Boo. It's the same character, he just had a mind in a quote-unquote soul at the time. So with all that being said, if Gotenks were to fight against Kid Boo, who would actually prove victorious? Well, let's get into that conclusion right now. So Gotenks versus Kid Kid Buu. Who would actually prove victorious? Well, in terms of overall power, I don't think that Kid Buu really even stands a chance against Gotenks. Not only was Super Saiyan Gotenks stronger than Super Saiyan 3 Goku, who was fighting rather evenly against Kid Buu, aside from the fact that he was playing around and dragging the fight out with his seemingly infinite stamina and regeneration at that point in time, but additionally, the fact of the matter is that Gotenks has abilities that allowed him to almost kill a far more powerful version of Buu in Super Boo, and that led to Boo absorbing him in the first place so that he'd be able to stand a chance against Gohan. And he himself stated he was the most powerful Boo at that point in time. So in terms of the power, in terms of the techniques, Gotenks would easily be able to win, assuming a couple of different factors. Number one, that Gotenks didn't play around too much. Because the fact of the matter is we know that Gotenks, with that five-minute timer, would be able to have that run out just like it did against Super Boo, because the fact is that if he played around too much and he toyed around too much with Kid Boo, he would have been able to, in turn, have his timer run out and lose that fight right then and there. Also, Kid Boo would be able to absorb him if the opportunity came up. However, at this point in time, 
time, we have to remember Gotenks has already been absorbed. He's already learned, hopefully, from the folly of his loss against Super Boo after he had uh, just let everything run out at that point in time. So there is a chance that he actually would learn from his mistakes and just go 100% right from the start and try and obliterate Kid Boo right then and there. We saw the power of the regeneration of Super Boo on display, and we saw that Gotenks, right when he was going to blast Super Boo right before he uh, was going to defuse, said that he was not going to allow the same regeneration to take place again. And there's an argument to be made that perhaps Super Boo had far greater regeneration capabilities than Kid Boo because the fact is he was far more powerful in that form and in that body. However, with that being said, you can make the argument that maybe somehow Kid Boo would be able to outlast him, but Kid Boo is just like uh, Gotenks in the same sense to where he'd play around, he wouldn't necessarily go full power, 100% focusing on the fight from the start. With Goku, with Vegeta, with everyone else, he played around just like Majin Buu did. The only ones who didn't really do that were Evil Buu and Super Buu to an extent. So the fact of the matter is, is that at the end of the day, if you want to make the argument about power, Gotenks would easily win this fight, and if he took it seriously, he definitely would win. But maybe if he played around too much, maybe if he chose not to actually, you know, go all out from the start, and he let that fusion timer elapse, or maybe Kid Buu kind of got the sneak on him and somehow absorbed him or hit him with the candy beam, and he wasn't able to, I don't know, do what happened with uh, Vegito by fighting him as a piece of candy, then there's a chance that Kid Buu actually would be able to prove victorious. But overall... I would have to give the edge to Gotenks. But let me know your own thoughts down below in the comments. Also, if you're new here, consider subscribing, enable notifications so you can see all my future videos. Make sure to leave a like, and also make sure to stick around, because there's a lot more to come in the future. Yeah, and you better subscribe.